Yeah, you must have realized there are different kinds of non-stationarities depending upon which conditions satisfied, which conditions fail. So, if the first condition is not satisfied, if the second or third condition fail, this non-stationarity is called non-stationarity of the TS class. TS class stands for trend stationary class. TS class stands for the trend stationary class. Okay, TS class stands for trend stationary class. And we'll come to understand that a little bit more carefully. Okay, once we look at let, look at things. Now, what is a trend stationary? Why do you call it TS class? Okay, in general, in general, in general, friends, can I write this off? Yeah. In general, what you have is so think of the Christmas tree. Okay, think of the Christmas tree. Okay. If I plotted the height of the Christmas tree on this axis, height of the Christmas tree at time t and time here, yeah. and t is equal to 0, what will be the height of the Christmas tree? 3. Three right? And every year the Christmas tree grows by about half a foot on an average, not exactly half a foot. Right? So actually, the Christmas tree, if you look at the, the, the equation 3 plus 0.5t, that will actually give you a straight line. Yes. With a slope 0.5, yeah. but the actual height of the Christmas tree would be somewhere around that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Depending upon what is the variance of ET, the larger the variance of ET, the larger will be this spread. Right? So, what this says is there is a trend which is driving the growth of the, uh, growth of the tree. Okay? And the error terms are ones which are distributed around the trend. So if you take the trend out, if you take the trend out, okay, if you take the trend out and look only at ET, whatever remains, only ET will remain. If you take this straight line out, right, then what do you get? You just what is left with ET, and the mean of ET is zero. The variance is constant, yes. yeah. right? So if you put a zero here, if you put the values of ET, there will be values like this, yeah. Sure, there will be values like this. So, if you remove the trend, what remains has a constant mean, which is zero in this case, a constant variance, and covariances which don't depend upon time. And therefore, we say that this process is a trend stationary process. Remove the trend out. Right? This process is a trend stationary process. Right? Or it's a non stationarity of the TS class. Take the trend out. Okay. <coughs> now sometimes friends, if you look at population for example, if you look at the size of the population on this axis, size of the population on this axis and time on this axis, right? Population doesn't grow linearly, you know. Population growth is a percentage of something. So the population growth is population growth rate is five percent and the initial population is hundred, next year we do hundred and five people. Then you get 5% of 105. Then you get 5% of the 5% of 105. So it's going to be a, it's going to grow exponentially. So your actual trend could be like this. Okay, right? Where? How do you model such a process? You model such a process as. Say P T is initial population. P0 into E raised to RP, where T is the time rate of growth, time, time, time period, R is the rate of growth, and E is the exponential, E raised to RP. Right, so you will get something like this. But if you take the natural log on both sides, then you get log of P0 plus RP. Yeah. Right. So instead of putting PT here, if you put log of PT here, yeah. and if you put an ET here, then this same phenomenon can be written as a straight line. Right? Because now it's it's a, it's a linear relationship, no? Except that this point will become log of PZ. Okay, and the data would be your PT will be not exactly like this, but around this. So if you take the trend out, again you will get trend stationary. Again you will get a stationary density. 
So such time series are called stationary of the TS curves. Okay, many time series, especially macroeconomic time series, are like that. For example, if you look at GDP in India, GDP in India is a trend. The average GDP today in the last five years is not the average, the average of the GDP per capita in the country from 2015 is not the same as the average of the GDP in India from 1950 to 55. India was much poorer in 1950 to 55. All of us are much better off. So therefore, there obviously is a trend. That's a trend stationary kind of a time series. Therefore, many macroeconomic time series are trend stationary. But we are concerned about another type of stationary. How much time do we have? Okay. Another type of stationarity that we must discuss, okay, and which is a very very interesting type of a non-stationarity. Okay, so me, I have a friend, and me and my friend play a very funny game, right? Both of us have a pet frog. Okay, so what we do is we have an urn, okay, and we keep the frog inside the urn, okay. And because you have nothing else to do, my friend stands here, I stand here. And both of us keep on calling the frog. Okay? Right? If the frog jumps towards my friend, I give him one rupee. Right? He gets one rupee. And I give him one rupee. If the frog jumps towards me, my friend gives me one. Right? But we are not satisfied doing this one, so the frog jumps out, we put the frog into the urn again <laughs> and do this again. Right? We keep on doing this for a very long time. Okay? Now fortunately the frog has no particular liking to me or my friend, so he is equally likely to jump in this direction or this direction. Right? Now what we are trying to model is the money that I have in my pocket during this process. You see, the frog jumps towards my friend, I give him one rupee. If the frog jumps towards me, I, he, I get one rupee. Right? I initially started with some money. Say, so let me call my initial earnings. Say, let me call, suppose I didn't start with any money to start. Okay, let's take a very simple case. Okay? Suppose I did not start with any money, so my Y0 initial money was 0. Okay? Now, what will be my earnings at Y1? Initial amount plus whether I earned one rupee or lost one rupee. Now that whether I earned uh, one rupee or lost one rupee, just like the coin toss of a coin, plus one or minus one. So whether I get one rupee or lose one rupee depends upon the outcome of a random variable, which we will call E1, which will take value either plus one if the frog jumps towards me, minus one if the frog jumps towards my friend. Right? So y1 is equal to y0 plus e1. Right? So if e1 takes the value plus 1, I, I have 1 rupee in my pocket. If, if, if e1 takes the value minus 1, I have, you know, I, I have minus 1 in my pocket. I owe 1 rupee to my friend. We write a note, right? Saying that I owe 1 rupee, but I don't have any rupee, so it's really minus 1. Right? Now what will be y2? Perfect. It will be y1 plus e2. Yeah. What will be y3? y2 plus e3. Or in general, what will be y2? Uh, y1 minus y1 plus y2 minus y2 plus y2 plus y2 This is another type of a time series. Yeah. This is called a random walk. It's called a simple random walk. Okay, it's called a simple random walk. I can generally write this as phi into yt minus 1 and specifically state that phi is equal to 1. Okay? Specifically then with, and we keep in my mind that phi is equal to 1. Okay? We shall not allow phi to be greater than 1. In an alternative scenario, the absolute value of phi can be less than 1. That is, phi can lie between say minus 0 0.99999 to plus 0 0.99999 right or phi can be 1 in my case phi is equal to 1 but in general let's keep the value of phi at the moment let it be between either absolute value of phi less than or equal to 1 so let's keep it like that without allowing it to be greater than 1 because if phi is greater than 1 yt will keep on becoming bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller and smaller 
if it y if phi is less than minus 1 